In today's video, we're exploring SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics. SVG is an image format, similar to HTML, but made for 2D graphics. With SVG, you can create shapes like circles, rectangles, polygons, and paths directly using code. The best part is that SVGs always stay sharp, no matter the screen size. Unlike PNG or JPEG images that are made of pixels and become blurry when zoomed in, SVGs are based on geometry. This means they can scale to any size without losing quality. You can design SVGs using tools like Figma or Illustrator, or simply write the code yourself. And it's easier than you might think. Let's talk about SVG basic shapes and styles. First, we create an SVG container using the SVG tag and set its width and height to 400 pixels, which makes a square canvas. Inside this canvas, we add a circle element. The CX and CY attributes place the circle's center at 200-200, which is right in the middle of the canvas. Here, the CX value controls the X axis and the CY value controls the Y axis. The R attribute sets the radius to 100 pixels, while the fill attribute colors the circle green. To make the canvas visible, we add an external style with a 3-pixel solid black border. With this simple setup, we get a perfect circle centered inside the SVG canvas. Let's style the circle by adding a red stroke and set the stroke width of 5 pixels. Then we set the fill to none, so the circle shows only a red border without any background color. If you remove the fill attribute by default, the fill is black, so whenever you don't want to fill, always use fill none. You can also move a circle by changing its position. For example, setting CX 400 and CY 400 places, the circle 400 pixels from both the X and Y axes. SVG tag in a self-closing form by adding a slash at the end, and it works the same way. Now let's create a rectangle using the rect tag. We set the width and height to 200 pixels, and the X100 and Y100 attributes place it 100 pixels from the top and left edges. We've added class rect, so we can style it with CSS. This draws a 200 by 200 pixel rectangle slightly away from the top left corner. Finally, we style it by giving the rect class a maroon fill. If you target shapes by tag name like rect or circle, the style applies to all of them, so it's better to use a class or ID for specific styling. You can also add a hover effect in SVG by giving the A class. After that, apply CSS to create the hover animation. Now you can see the effect when you hover over it. Let's talk about the SVG viewport and view box. The width and height attributes define the size of the viewport, which is basically the visible area or or canvas where SVG shapes are drawn. For example, if we set both to 400 pixels, the viewport is 400 by 400 pixels. Any shapes we add will appear inside this area. If we change it to 200 by 200, the canvas becomes smaller. If we set it to 200 by 400, it looks taller. And at 300 by 150, it becomes much smaller. So the viewport size always depends on the width and height attributes. You can think of the viewport as a frame or window through which you view your SVG drawing. SVG view box. The view box attribute defines which part of the drawing area is visible inside the viewport. It allows us to zoom in, zoom out, and move around different parts of the SVG. The view box takes four values, min x, min y, width, and height. For example, view box 0, 0, 200, 200 starts at the top left corner 0, 0, and shows a 200 by 200 unit area. At first, this may look the same as the viewport, but the real effect comes from the first two values. By changing min x and min y, we can move the visible area. For example, setting min x to 200 shows only the right half of the circle, and setting min y to 200 shifts it upward to show the bottom part. Using view box 100, 50, 200, 200 moves the view to the upper part of the circle, while view box 200, 200, 200, 200 shows just the bottom right slice. To zoom with the view box, we use the last two parameters, width and height. 
These define the size of the view box. If these numbers are larger than the viewport, the SVG zooms out. If they are smaller, it zooms in. For example, if the view box size matches the viewport, like 400 by 400, the circle is centered and fits perfectly. If we make the view box bigger than the viewport, the circle looks smaller, which means it zooms out. If we make the view box smaller, the circle looks bigger, which means it zooms in. Changing the viewport size only affects the canvas size, but the visible part of the circle remains the same. For instance, Viewbox 0, 200, 200, 200 shows only the bottom left part of the circle, and resizing the viewport won't change that. Always remember, when using a viewbox, define the viewport size with width and height. Otherwise, the SVG may display oversized graphics. You can add an external SVG using the IMG tag or write it directly with inline SVG code. When I apply a style to the SVG path and fill it with maroon, the change only affects the inline SVG, not the external one. That's the key difference. Inline SVG can be styled and modified with CSS, but external SVG files cannot. Another important point is that inline SVG is responsive by default, while external embedded SVG is not. Remember, if you remove the XMLN's attribute from the SVG code, the external file may not display correctly. But for inline SVG, removing it doesn't affect the image. The XMLN's attribute defines the namespace and tells the browser this code belongs to SVG. It's required for external SVGs to display correctly everywhere. Let's talk about the SVG gradients. To start, we can add a radial gradient to a circle inside the defs tag, which is used to define reusable elements. Here, we create a radial gradient that starts from the center with CX 50% and CY 50% and spreads out with a radius of 50%. Within it, stop elements define the colors. The first stop at offset 0% with stop color white makes the center white, while the second stop at offset 100% with stop color black makes the outer edge black. To apply this gradient, we give it an ID and reference it in the circle's fill using URL hash ID name, which creates a smooth blend from white at the center to black at the edges. Next, let's add a linear gradient to a path. Again, inside defs, we define a linear gradient starting at x1, 0%, and y1, 0%, which is the top left corner, and ending at x2, 100%, and y2, 100%, the bottom right corner. It has two stops, the first at offset 0% with a pink stop color, and the second at offset 100% with a peach stop color. Similar to the radial gradient, we assign it an ID and apply it to the path's fill. The result is a smooth diagonal gradient that flows from pink to peach. Now let's add text inside our SVG. In this example, the text is placed at the bottom center of the SVG image using the text tag. The attributes X, 45, and Y, 122, set its position of the text on the canvas. The font size 20 makes the text 20 pixels. Font weight 700 makes it bold, and fill sets the color to black. Inside the tag, we write the actual text we want to display. In this case, it's SVG, which displays as bold black text at the defined position. The text appears 45 pixels from the left and 122 pixels from the top. This text is also responsive and works well across all screen sizes. Now let's look at this SVG path example. The path element is used to create complex shapes, and its shape is defined by the D attribute, which stands for draw. The basic command M means move, and sets a starting point at specific X and Y coordinates. Uppercase M moves relative to the SVG view box, while lowercase m moves from the last point. To draw a line, we use the L command, which creates straight lines. In this example, the path commands draw three horizontal lines, just like a hamburger menu icon. To learn more about paths, check out our CSS clip path video in the last chapter.
Now let's learn one more thing with this SVG smiley example. In this code, the G tag is used to group shapes together. The first group creates two circles, while the second group creates two paths. This makes it easy to see how each part works. In the Inspect tab, you'll notice the first group is for the smiley face, and the second group is for the eyebrows.